Sanghoon. Uh, really well done for submitting these pieces of work. Um, your first question was on how um, some people believe that schools should be more entertaining and others think that they should focus on being educational and to explore this. Um, so let's see what you've got. Some people think that schools have to be more entertaining while others think that their sole purpose is to educate. Many parents worry that their children's education due to the competitive labour market. Therefore, some parents say that schools should lessen non-academic activities to focus on acquiring more knowledge. Nevertheless, I believe that entertaining activities in schools are also a part of education that develop student social skills and provide motivation. Okay, so a strong introduction there. Um, I would say that it is uh, best to have this all as one paragraph because it, it is leading on from one to the other and that would um, lead to less confusion. Okay, um, let's have a look at the language more closely. Some people think that schools have to be more entertaining while others, others think that their sole purpose is to educate. Full stop. Many parents worry about their children's education due to the competitive labour market. Therefore, some parents say that schools should lessen non-academic activities to focus on acquiring more knowledge. Nevertheless, I believe that entertaining activities in school are also a part of education that develops students' social skills and provides motivation. Okay, well done. Good. Uh, good. What I would say is just to finish your introduction by saying what this essay will do. And that is purely so that you can prove to the examiner that you have understood the question and that you're doing the task well. So, um, for example, if you get a question saying discuss both sides, you would acknowledge that in your introduction. If you were to have one that says... Um, which side do you agree with, you would acknowledge that as well. Okay, so make that really clear in your introduction, just so you can say to the examiner, look, I've understood the question, this is what I'm going to do, because that's what you've asked me to do. Okay, um, next paragraph then. So firstly, schools should provide students with opportunities to develop their social skills. Social skills will help them fit into society uh, later in life, and they will help them to cooperate with others. For example, in school, students often have group activities or projects. By participating in group activities at school, students will face a lot of obstacles such as a disagreement with other students. Eventually, they will understand the method that collaborating with others will lead to success. Them. This skill is obviously important when they start to work after graduation. Therefore, schools should provide more extracurricular activities that require them to work with others. Okay, good. So, a good structure here. You've introduced your point, you've given some evidence, and then afterwards you've rounded that off with a kind of concluding sentence explaining um, how this is relevant. So, that is good. Um, students face a lot more obstacles such as disagreement with other students. Okay, what I would say here, to get your points for evidence, I would say suggesting what kind of group activities they do at school. So what sort of projects can you think of? Um, um, is it something where they have to construct uh, 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 something together or where they have to um, divide the work between them, etc. So be a little more specific here because we've got quite a generalised example. So it'd be good just to state a couple of examples of those activities. Um, good. Was when they start graduation. Okay, and then when we go on to this bit, be careful with extracurricular activities because this means um, schools that sorry, activities that are outside of school time. So things like homework club or um, uh, coming back to school to play basketball or, or something like that. So um, 
instead of extracurricular activities, I would say provide more varied activities or diverse activities that require them to work with others. Okay, furthermore, a student should enjoy enormous extracurricular activities provided by a school which visualise students' lives while some people believe that schools should only focus on students' academic achievement. Through non-educational activities, students could not only find their life goals but also excel in academics. For example, many school sports teams request students to achieve and maintain a certain grade to join them. Okay, so let's go through that one again. Furthermore, a student should enjoy extracurricular activities provided by a school um, which okay so this sentence I would reduce it slightly because we've mentioned this argument already so we don't need to have this second part here we can ig ignore that part um, and say um, students enjoy activities which um, help them to think about their futures, maybe, or help them to think about their talents, for example. Through non-educational activities, students could not only find their life goals, but also excel in their academics. Um, I would say here, but also be motivated to excel, excel in academics. And then this is a really good example. So many school sports teams request students to achieve a and maintain a certain grade to join the teams. Okay, so that there is your motivation to excel in academia. As a result, students are motivated to accomplish their academic goals for engaging in extracurricular activities in schools. Therefore, non-educational programs in school will lead them to perform better in their academics. Okay, good. So, um, a nice point here, and um, one that is well thought about, um, not only find their life course, but also excel in their academics. I would say here, therefore, non-educational programmes in school will lead them to perform better in their academics, proving that um, education, uh, sorry, that entertaining activities have a high value in schools. Okay, just to link back to the question there. To conclude from the examples and arguments given, I firmly believe that schools should encourage students to participate in non-academic activities. Those activities will invigorate their lives and could provide strong motivation to succeed in their academics, as well as, so instead of and, because we've got and a couple of times already, as well as better their social skills. So better to improve, better their social skills. Okay, good. Um, this conclusion is quite short. Um, what I would say is possibly to develop your opinion slightly, you could talk about the future. So do you think that um, more entertaining activities will be incorporated in the future in schools? Just having one sentence about that would broaden your opinion slightly and um, show a little bit more depth there. Um, but yes, a good piece of work there. Um, lots of good points. Um, I would say just be very careful of general um, phrases like participating in group activities in schools. So give examples of those. OK, um, because this is not a statistical example, we want to make it a little bit more specific. So thinking of some examples of those group activities will do that. But yes, well done. Um, let's have a look at your next one. So your essay number two, um, this one here. So a p doing an enjoyable activity with a child can develop better skills and more creativity than reading. To what extent do you agree? Use reasons and specific examples to explain your answer. Okay, so... Um, nowadays, more people are trying to develop better skills due to the difficulties in finding jobs. Among numerous methods, spending time with a child has been attracting public attention. However, I believe that simply reading a book is more efficient and provides more diversity to develop one's skills. This essay will discuss both sides, 
using examples to demonstrate points and support arguments. Okay, good. Firstly, books are more available and accessible than playing with a child. To do an activity with a child, an adult needs to find a perfect time when both of them are available. Also, they require a safe place uh, for doing physical activity. However, due to technology, no the, due to technology, books that contain knowledge um, okay, yeah, the knowledge or the skills that we want to learn are always accessible on the internet, lowercase i. Also, we do not have to consider a child's leisure time to read a book. Therefore, reading books to develop skills is more productive. Okay, uh, good. Due to technology, books that contain the knowledge or the skills that we want to learn are always accessible on the internet. Okay, I would... Uh, just like in the last essay, try to be a little bit more specific here. So, um, can you think of particular types of books that are available on the internet? Um, I know obviously there are many examples, but just giving a couple of either names or types of books, that will make your evidence a little bit stronger. Okay. Um, therefore, reading books to develop skills is more productive. Now, be careful here, because productive is good, but it's slightly off question, because we're trying to say um, which one can develop better skills rather than which one is more productive. So link back to the question at every opportunity there. Um, moreover, people can develop more diverse skills by reading books than playing with a child. I believe that reading a book means learning other people's experience indirectly. Compared to reading books, people usually have opportunities to get along with only a few children in life. Therefore, skills that people can learn from a child are more limited than reading books. Okay, so again, um, link back to the question here to make it really clear. And with your example, is there a way that you can make this slightly more specific? Because at the moment we're speaking quite generally. Um, try to think of a more specific example there. To conclude, although some people think that spending time with a child is better to develop our skills, I believe that reading is not only more efficient so it's not only a more efficient way to develop our skills, but also that we can learn a wider variety of skills from books. Okay, good. So your conclusion is good. You've linked it a lot to the question there. You've given your opinion. Um, what I would say is that in your introduction you've said that your essay is going to discuss both sides. However, both of your points in this essay are discussing why books are better. Okay, so I would outline that here. Um, because at the end of the day the question is to what extent do you agree? So you need to be talking about your opinion and giving evidence for that. So we're not actually discussing both sides in this essay. We're looking at why um, you think reading is better. Okay, so be clear in that one. Um, okay, good. I would say uh, in terms of length, it's difficult on an email because it's um it's spread out a little bit more <laughs> um but i would say that possibly this is a little bit short um bearing in mind that it starts here and finishes just here so developing your example slightly more would give you a little bit more length there um yeah, I would say that is what is missing in this essay. Although you've got a good structure and good vocabulary there, it's the evidence that needs a little bit more development to, to get the length of the essay and the, and the depth that they would be looking for. Okay, but yeah, a good piece of writing, two, two good pieces of writing, in fact. Um, I'd say the common theme in both is just extending your examples a little bit more. Um, if there is a point when you're reading through and you, if you're trying to look through the eyes of the examiner, um, look for points where the examiner would say, like what, or what examples are you talking about here, and try to add those in. 
okay, to get the higher marks. Um, but yes, well done, good.